Alright folks, this week's surf tip is to teach you how to forecast if it's worth getting in the car and coming down for a surf. We're going to do it for Donegal Bay, including Strand Hill, Streda, Bundoran and Rosnaula. So, you'll excuse my uh, drawing skills. Let's start here. This is Strand Hill, Streda, Bundoran, Rosnaula. They're the four main beaches used in the Donegal Bay area. First of all, when you're trying to forecast surf, you're going to need to get information. The place I get my information for forecasting is windguru.com. The windguru will give you a few different key pieces of information. Wave height, wave direction, wave period, wind speed, and wind direction. Five different pieces of information that you need to make an accurate forecast. Wave height, kind of an obvious one. One thing to work out, to watch out for when you're looking at the websites is, if it says two meters on windguru, it's probably more like two foot by the time it actually gets into the beach. So you need to slash it in three. Don't, don't accept that two meters on wind group means two meters when it hits the actual beach. I think that's the open ocean swell they're talking about, okay? So that's the wave height. Wave direction. Now this one trips a lot of people up. As you can see, Donegal Bay faces more or less southwest, okay? So if you have a northerly swell, it just isn't going to hit Donegal Bay as well as it would, for example, Port Rush or North Donegal. It will hit Strand Hill, the best of all the beaches, because it, it is the most exposed to a northerly swell out here. It'll hit Rosnaula, the worst of all the beaches, because it's the most sheltered from a northerly swell. It's pretty logical. If there's land in the way, your northerly swell just isn't going to get in here. So what we're looking for in Donegal Bay is a southwest swell. So that's wave height and wave direction. The next main point is wave period. Now, Wave period trips everyone up. There's a lot of people that have jumped in cars and drove to Bundoran for the weekend and they're disappointed because the surf wasn't as good as they thought to be and that's because of the, the problem with predicting the period. So, the period is the distance between the two tops or the two bottom of the waves, put it in its simplest form. If you have a wave forecast on Wind Guru for five second wave period, it's measured in seconds. It's the time it takes the wave to move past the fixed point. So if you have a wave period of 5 seconds, with a wave height of 2 meters coming in a southwesterly direction, you will have probably a 2 foot wave on Tullin Strand or Strand Hill or Streda. If you have the exact same conditions except it's a 15 second period, you'll probably have the nicest surf you've seen in ages, a lot bigger than 2 foot, probably like 4, 6, maybe even 8 foot, and the difference is, is the period. Because it's, the waves are spread out more, they have travelled further from further away, and they're just better, stronger, nicer formed waves. So when you are looking at surf forecast, it's one thing to know your height and your swell direction, but you also got to couple that with a period of at least 8 or 9 seconds or more. You know that the closer to zero the period gets, basically, the crapper the surf. Whereas, the bigger the period, the better the surf. So, I've covered wave height, wave direction, wave period. So far we're only talking about the waves, but now you know what's coming at you, you need to know what it's going to look like. And the major thing that affects that is the wind. So if you have an onshore wind, and again just to cover that, that term, because a lot of people ask me, if you have your shore here, and you have the swell coming like that, if you have the wind coming behind it, it is coming onto the shore. So that's onshore wind. Whereas if we put our shore over here and our swell's hitting this shore and no, I've made a ball to that. <laughs> I'll show you. Swell's coming in here, but the wind is coming offshore. So w the swell needs to always be onshore as such. The swell needs to always be coming onto the shore. But if you have the wind offshore, you'll get those nice, clean, crisp, easy to surf, rideable right shoulders, good waves whereas if you've onshore you'll basically get a mess of waves 
that the wind is pushing over all the time. So it's going to break up all the different uh, pieces of waves. So you'll never get a consistent wave. Offshore will actually clean it up. Now, wind direction is one thing, but you also got to talk about wind speed. Speed is, uh, well, like, like a lot of things, less is better. If you have 5 miles an hour offshore, perfect offshore conditions. If you have 25 miles an hour offshore, you got a couple of problems. First of all, it's going to be harder to catch the waves. Secondly, there's a hazard there that you could actually get blown out to sea. Okay? But also, when you're trying to forecast your surf, strong offshore winds will actually, over time, dampen down the surf. It takes the power out of it. If you think of it, the surf's going this way, the wind's going that way, and the wind's killing the power of the surf. So over a long period of time, if you've offshore winds for two or three days, it can actually completely dampen down the waves. And despite the, the wind groove forecast, it'll still be small. Otherwise, you can always just ring us or check Facebook. But surf forecasting is about practice. It's about looking at the charts and then looking at the surf. Looking at the charts, looking at the surf. And eventually you start to tweak what works for your area. This is just Donegal Bay I've covered. But you want at least a 2 meter swell. You want at least a 9 second period. You want it hitting the shore directly, not sheltered from the shore. And you want it offshore, but not too strong offshore. And that's this week's tip.